JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, and welcome to JSA TV. With us today, we have Mr. Michael Four. Michael is the Vice President of Market and Member Services for NGN. Michael's here to talk to us a little bit about the latest and greatest at NGN, but more importantly, he's, to, he's here to talk to us a little bit about rural broadband development, and more importantly, what NGN is doing in, in that space. So, Michael, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. We appreciate it. Outstanding, outstanding. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, why don't you tell our viewers, first and foremost, a little bit about NGN. What do you do? NGN is a wholesale service provider. We bring the Internet out of Atlanta into rural parts of Georgia, where we connect with service providers who deliver service to the rural, um, rural Georgians and the rural businesses out in the area that we serve. Very good. So, um, uh, you know, I know a little bit about you, specifically um, how, how the company was formed. Um, so NGN was formed by leveraging the infrastructure and resources um, of two electric membership cooperatives, or EMCs. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit or explain how the uh, Habersham EMC and the Blue Ridge EMC were involved in the n initial development and launch of NGN? Sure, Dean. As I mentioned, you know, our goal is to bring the Internet from the municipality, from Atlanta out mm -hmm. to the rural areas. Um, so what we have is we have two EMCs who had some dark fiber and were interested. They had heard their communities and they were interested in, in serving their communities with broadband. But uh, we worked together to bring them stability into those networks and deliver internet from Atlanta. What they had was they had engineering capabilities, they had trucks, they had dark fiber, they had just a tremendous amount of resources that are useful when you're trying to bring broadband to rural areas. Mm -hmm. So we coupled those resources that they had with our ability to light a network and manage a network and provide NOC support and through that, you know, in their support we were able to launch a successful launch of NGN. Outstanding. So let's talk about EMCs a little bit. So I know that you guys have you've been heavy, heavily involved in, in the EMCs um, and, and developed a model of working with the electric co-ops and et cetera to make sure that you are serving those, um, those rural areas there in, in Georgia. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the highlights of, of working with the EMC and what you have all been able to accomplish? You know, if you've never been part of, a, of an EMC culture, it's just an amazing culture to be part of. The, the co-op family is a very tight family, and they really care about the rural communities that they serve. Um, the, the model that we built is for munis and co-ops, really, um, because both, I think, have that focus of serving their communities. And so you'll have an electric co-op or you'll have a municipality, and they have some dark fiber or maybe they're in implementing smart grid into their networks to future-proof those networks and to, to make either the electric delivery or the water delivery you know, more responsive and to be able to put measurements in place. So what we can do is we can connect to those networks so that they're not just islands all over the place. We'll connect those networks, we'll bring the internet, we'll light those networks, we'll manage those networks and use that excess capacity then to bring fiber to the premise, whether it's a small business, a hospital, a home, and we'll deliver, deliver gigabit services to each one of those facilities over those, just, just using the excess capacity that, that they have on their networks. Very interesting. So you mentioned um, electricity, and, and you, so we're talking about utilities here a, a bit, too. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what you think the role of the utility should be in making sure that those underserved um, areas are, are getting broadband? Yeah, I think it can be significant. You know, as we watch the, we watch the chatter around really the the national and state level here in Georgia, there's been a lot of chatter this year mm -hmm. about how are we going to serve rural Georgians, but you hear it all across the nation really. And just again, the understanding that the electric co-ops and rural utilities have on the needs of their community and the, and the concentration that they have on delivering services to the communities that they serve, 
they're vested in those communities. They care about those communities. It's not about a stockholder. It's about the people. Those people are their stockholders. They're the ones who, who invest in that company. So I think that the role of the rural utilities is significant in the future. And uh, I think their commitment to seeing it done is significant in the future. Yeah, you know, um, a theme that is coming out during this uh, this conversation today is community, and it does sound like um, it is a dedication or a commitment to that community that is really driving a lot of this. Um, so um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about um, the transformation that you have seen in these these rural communities and, and how it's changing the lives of, uh, of Georgians. You know, Dean, when you go again back to the start, we were started by communities. And um, the transformation we're seeing in the communities we serve is it's amazing. Uh, because I think the best way to understand the transformation is to talk to the ones who can't get it. When you talk to the ones who don't get the service, then you really understand how valuable the service is to the ones who do get the service. And uh, and their voice is getting louder in the regions that we can't quite get to yet because they understand, hey, someone that lives close to me has a gigabit fiber to their home, but I'm still struggling with this. My kids are struggling to do their school. My my biz, small business is struggling. I want to work from home. So, you know, sometimes looking at the ones who we haven't quite been able to get yet are the best way to tell the impact to those we have been able to get. We've got, we've got some rural facilities that we've been able to keep here in rural Georgia. We've got wineries who have fiber to the premise. We have granaries that were built in the 1800s that have fiber to the premise and they sell internet. They sell their stone ground meal over the internet. Um, stores that were built in the 1800s that have fiber to them. So it's, it's amazing to see rural America get that kind of an opportunity. And what I really hope to see is that opportunity go into the children because we still have a lot of kids at home who can't get connectivity at home to do their studying. We've got one local university who is reaching out into the rural schools and delivering classes to those rural schools who couldn't get it before. And, and just two-way interaction with the schools and with the children. And so we're starting to see it in education. Uh, we've got to get to those kids at home yet we're seeing it impact the businesses. We're still working on some telehealth solutions. So there's a lot going on. Um, and considering we're really only, you know, about four or five years into having this fiber network available. Yeah, that is that is fascinating. The work that you guys are doing over there has um, implications beyond um, beyond what you might typically associate with a, with a telecommunications provider. So, right. Michael, thank you very much for joining us today. Very insightful. Uh, we appreciate it. We'd love to have you back. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.